it's Jazz at Red Panda Reads. I love red pandas, books, and therefore I decided to make a channel and combine the two. Makes sense to me. Thanks for joining me today on my September reading wrap up. And I actually read eight books during the month of September. So six of those were physical books and two of those were audio tapes. And I think I'm going to start with my absolute favourite. This has gone on to my Goodreads as one of my most loved books of 2020. And that book is Moonrise by Sarah Crossan. I got this book from a charity shop. It was in the young adult section and I'd seen it talked about on other people's channels and it just sounded really interesting. It's basically about a young boy who goes to Texas to go and reconnect with his brother who's on death's row and he hasn't seen his brother for I think it's over 10 years um, since he'd initially been arrested and accused of murder and this book explores his relationship with his brother as he gets to reconnect in this really difficult part of his brother's life and oh my goodness the themes in this book I so first of all it explores the idea of forgiveness throughout it in so many different and diverse ways which just kind of makes the kind of whole idea of being on death's row seem even more awful throughout the book it's also has these relationships within the books not just between the protagonist and his brother but between the protagonist and his family members from kind of his mother who has never really been there for him to his auntie and his sister and to this girl he meets while he's trying to reconnect and while this book is quite short it looks chunky I know but the whole thing is written in verse so it's actually a really quick read so although it's quite although it's quite a short book and I think some of the characters it doesn't seem there's long enough for the characters to get to really know and connect and develop relationships. The way she does it, you care so much about all these relationships and they are so believable. And it's just beautiful. And be warned, this will probably make you cry. Um, it is heartbreaking and it is definitely a theme I'd like to read in more books about Death's Row. So if anyone has any either fiction or non-fiction books that tackle a similar subject, please let me know because, yeah, this is a heartbreaking story of something which seems so alien to me that someone could be killed for a crime. And I think the most poignant line in this book is at the end, our main character, um, whose name, his name is Joe. So the main character, Joe, um, he is outside the prison and there's someone there saying, oh, um, there's, there's a guy being killed tonight. So just a stranger. Joe has no idea who this guy is. And the um, guy goes, do you know what he did? And Joe says, does it matter? Does it really matter what he did? And oh, that just gave me shivers, that line, because you're there thinking, is there really anything that can be bad enough to just say someone can die? And also, how can you ever be sure? And it's all these concepts are just put into these two lines and it's heartbreaking. So yeah, read Moonrise. It is an absolutely mesmerizing, beautiful book. The next book that I absolutely adored was the first book I read in the month and I read it in a day and that is Heartstopper by Alice Osman. Oh, this is another book I just want to hug to me. It is such a joy to read. Um, it's a graphic novel, um, so and I really like, I love the artwork within it. It's absolutely beautiful, and it's got a little doggy, which always gives plus points from me. Um, but it follows two young guys, one of them who identifies as gay, and one of them at the beginning who identifies as straight and then they slowly fall in love. And it's lovely. It's just such a happy read. It's so warm. I love the relationship that they develop, which initially is literally just playing with their dog in the snow. And it's so dreamy. And I really can't wait to read the next volumes in this series. The next book I've got is a book I brought from a charity shop, and that is Naomi Novik. <laughs> That is Perimere by Naomi Novik. 
Normally I find it quite hard to choose a book without knowing anything about it. Often when I go to charity shops, I'll pick up books because I've seen other people talk about it or it's been recommended to me. And I simply picked up this book because I like the cover and it involved dragons. It's a historical fiction with kind of fantasy elements involved. So it's set during the Napoleonic War and as well as naval ships, there are dragons involved in the conflict. So people hatch dragons, they kind of form a bond between the rider and the dragon and then the dragons go and fight. And they are very, very important in the war effort because they're quite rare. And therefore, if you do become bonded to a dragon's egg, you have to leave everything behind and devote your life to being a dragon rider. So this book follows the main protagonist, which is Lawrence, who was a naval officer and he captures a French ship and it has a dragon's egg, which hatches and bonds with him. And he names the dragon Temeraire. And it then follows their adventures as Lawrence and Ter Temeraire um, train together in kind of an academy. And then they go on a mission, which ends up fighting the French. And what I loved about this book was the relationship between Temeraire and um, Lawrence. As with, for example, Aragon, which is one of my favourite books that I um, read as a kid, it had such a real and fresh and beautiful relationship. You could tell that the human and the dragon so cared, so cared about each other and there was so much respect between them. There is one heartbreaking bit where a trainer and a dragon don't get on, well at least the trainer doesn't like the dragon. He treats him like, you know, like a worthless piece of paper and it's heartbreaking and that guy I just want to hit in the face and I'm not a violent person but honestly I would happily um I don't know what's something that's going to be harmless but show my anger I would happily throw some custard in his face because he treats his dragon so horribly and all the little dragon wants to be is loved so I was really happy with this find I really enjoyed it um I definitely want to try and get more in this series so the next book I've got is Finding Ruby by Jemima Price. So this is a recently released book and it's Jemima Price's debut novel. So well done, well done her. I would absolutely adore to write a book. I tried when I was younger and it turns out there's this thing called planning that I didn't quite realise back then. So I was given this book and it's not normally the type of book I would buy. It follows a young girl called Ruby whose boyfriend persuades her to go backpacking um, across Thailand and she hates kind of backpacking um, but he basically says that if you go I might propose to you which is complete utter rubbish um, and then she goes away and at some point during their journey events occur and they get separated and she gets left alone in kind of a foreign country with just her backpack um, and she finds herself and realises she doesn't necessarily need her boyfriend to be happy and be herself. And this book kind of reads almost like someone who's gone travelling's journal. And I, the bits I did like about it included the fact that throughout the book there are um, email chains, email, no, email discussions that she sends back to her friends or family and sister and each email, despite basically saying the same thing, is written very differently. And I think that gives you a good idea of her relationships with other people and a better idea of her as an individual. And I thought that was a really interesting and good way to get to know our main character, Ruby. However, I did have a few issues with the book. So there were a few things within it, um, such as her relationship with her boyfriend, which weren't really explored in depth. There was no critique of that relationship and there I thought there were lots of problems with it and certain bits that made me quite uncomfortable and it would have been quite good for the author to have some way looked at that in more detail. The other thing I'll just mention is for a book that was published this way some of the language was quite outdated. I know she's planning on writing another novel and if she does I think it's just very important to consider some of the language she used which for and make sure it's more updated and more appropriate for kind of readers these days. Altogether, it's definitely made me want to go and do a little bit more traveling, 
especially certain places it's made me want to definitely go and explore other places it's made me think no far too much partying and alcohol <laughs> and tourism the next book I've got is Kenzuki's Kingdom by Michael Mapergo so I picked this up in a charity shop because we studied it in year five so I was quite young insert here how young I was um, and I loved it and it follows a boy named Michael whose parents decide to go sailing around the world and at some point during his sailing trip he gets knocked off the boat his parents are unaware and he gets washed up on this island and it turns out he's not alone on the island and I adored this as a kid absolutely loved it I loved the adventure I loved the idea of disappearing onto the mis a mystical island and kind of becoming one with the nature there and the thing that is the funniest is as a kid I thought this was based on a real story because <laughs> at the back there's a letter and I thought the letter was real um I thought this book was real I was very wrong I looked it up now on this thing called the internet um, and it's not based on the real story um, although I enjoyed it I can definitely see that it's aimed at a younger audience I found that the character development was quite minimal throughout the book you kind of were just accepting of what was happening and although it was very fast-paced it also was just quite mellow I guess um the bits that are kind of supposed to be a bit like creepy and scary didn't feel that way and I think the only reason for that is it is written for kids and I'm no longer a kid so I think this is a wonderful book but definitely more aimed at children and I think I get a lot let uh, I get less out of it now that I'm an adult and I've realized it's not based on a true story my last physical book is another charity shop buy and that is Wakenhurst by Michelle Paver. So I've seen this book on other people's channels. I didn't actually realise when I brought it that it was the same book because I'd seen a different cover with this massive raven on the front. Um, but it was kind of um, sold as a gothic thriller and it follows a young girl called Maud um, who is living in a large house in the Fens in Edwardian Suffolk and she basically has a father who is extremely repressive and kind of becomes obsessed with devils and demons and on the back it says kind of Maud must survive in a world haunted by witchcraft the age-old legends of her beloved Fen and the even more nightmarish demons of her father's past so I was expecting a lot of kind of surrealism and creepiness and witchy stuff and although the book had some quite weird and disturbing moments, it was mainly because her father was such a terrible person and thought that he could see devils rather than there actually being any kind of physical devils. And there were some hints of kind of weird stuff that couldn't be explained from the book, but there you potentially, you could say potentially that what the father thought was happening was in his mind or he was causing it to happen himself so that kind of weird surreal creepiness didn't quite translate within the book however I really enjoyed it I loved the setting it had this kind of contrast of this really dark sinister fen juxtaposed by this kind of I guess absolutely what's the word um so much nature full of life within this area so although it was so often described as being very creepy it actually seemed more vibrant and full of life than the house of which Maud grows up in and you always feel safer when you're in the fen which everyone is scared of than when you're in the house I would recommend this book but I've seen other people say that they prefer Michelle Paver's other books so I might have to read her other books because I really enjoyed her writing style I liked her ideas this book just didn't give me everything I was expecting. So the next two books I've got are books I listened to on audio. And the first of that is Tipping the Velvet by Sarah Waters. 
So this is the first Sarah Waters book I've read and I was really, really impressed. Um, lots of people have advised me to read Fingersmith and that was initially on my TBR, but then I saw like a deal of buy two audio tapes for the price of one and Tipping the Velvet was on it. So I decided to go for that first. And I did really enjoy it. It is a coming of age story set in Victorian England which follows a young girl called Nancy who's initially an oyster girl and at about the age of 17 she goes to her local theatre and she sees a um, woman who's cross-dressing as a man called Kitty Butler and becomes completely enthralled by her and she then goes on to befriend and work with Kitty Butler and they move to London together and although I'd say Nancy isn't the most likeable person and although she does some things which just seem so silly you can see why she acts the way she does some of the sex scenes in it are quite graphic um which I've heard is more than some of her other books but I felt they were all appropriate and they had a place for them and I just yeah I enjoyed the book a lot and I'm looking forward to reading more Sarah Waters so the last book I listened to on audio was Small Island by Andrea Nevi. This is another book that I, I think I got because I was kind of interested in the more historic aspects. So it follows, um, so it, it follows kind of two um, people, Gilbert and Hutent, Gilbert and Hutents, who travel over to the UK, UK as part of the Windrush generation and they end up staying in a house of two white British people, Queenie and Arthur. No, not Arthur. Oh my goodness. Bernard, or Bernard. Arthur's Bernard's dad. So a Queenie and Bernard. And, it's, and each of the book explores each of the characters and is written from their point of view in different sections. And the thing I was disappointed with was I was expecting a lot more critique and exploration of what it was like for the people who've moved over from the Caribbean to England and how they were treated and I was expecting a lot more exploration of that. It was looked into and it was dealt with and kind of the discrimination they had against them was horrific but I was expecting there to be more of that where there was a lot of focus on each of these characters past. I absolutely adored the audio narrators so I would say if you were to get this book I would actually recommend getting it on audio because the voices for each of the characters were phen phen phenomenal. Altogether I thought it was a good read. I'm keen to read more um, fiction set in the Windrush generation so let me know if you have any recommendations but yeah. So that's all my books. Um, on other exciting news I now have an Instagram account I'll uh, link it below so if you want to see me trying to take pretty pictures of books that's the place to go um, and lovely as always to talk to you all um, and take care stay safe <laughs>